probably have no idea who I am um because I'll give you a little bit of background of why I can kind of get away with with teaching this I was uh the local chatelaine for the was the then shire of Foxdale in the mid realm in the midlands um for a long time and before that I was a chatelaine for Rock Eldon Shire Rock Eldon um in the same general area or I think like eight years, something like that, and then became the baronial chatelaine when the, the shires all got together and formed the barony. Um, was also moved up to regional for the Midlands chatelaine and spent about three years as kingdom chatelaine for the mid realm. So I've got um, a little bit of experience, but I will do a disclaimer. It has been probably about five years, maybe six, um, since I was kingdom chatelaine. So it's, you know, it's been a while. It isn't, you know, yesterday. However, I do have this, this very adamant belief that you're kind of, you kind of do the shadowing gig your entire life. Like everybody does to some extent. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about. So again, I have an outline that's just talking points. It's set up so that you can you know, write your own notes on it. Um, it. It doesn't really, it's just sort of like topics, things that we're going to talk about. If you want to, that is on the RUM page where you connected to this link, you can download it. It is also on, um, or you can email me or PM me later, and I will be happy to give that to you. No problem at all. It's, um, Again, it's just sort of things that, that I'm going to talk about and kind of go over. So let's take a look at the Chatelaine position from sort of a local, a local Shire or a Canton Chatelaine. And we'll sort of work through um, the differences and the similarities between being a local Chatelaine, being a regional, and being kingdom. Um, and kind of sort of touch on just from uh, talking to the past and the current and working with the current society. Chatelaine as well. There's a lot of crossover, but there's also a little bit of, of, of differences. If you're starting at a local level, there's quite a few people that think that pretty much your primary job is to recruit new members. But that's minimalizing, I believe, what the position sort of entails. It's a lot more than just recruitment. Because along with recruitment, what goes hand in hand is retention. And the people that you're recruiting in, um, like with, with any activity, they're individuals. And you have to deal with them as an individual. And to, if you were to sort of set up this, here's the roadmap of things that I should do for every single person that comes into this, my local group, you're going to probably lose a couple of people because if you're not looking at them as individuals with individual interests, you, you, you can like misstep a little bit in trying to help these people find a path. So recruiting people is a big part of the position, obviously, as is mentoring. And the people that you are mentoring could be your deputy, but it's also the people that are in the group. As, as a, oh, and guys, I'm sorry, I should have said this earlier. Um, if you want to, like, unmute at any time, ask a question, ask a clarification, throw out a comment, you're welcome. <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't just like, this. here, listen to me pontificate for an hour. Um, you're, you're not just mentoring the newcomers. I mean, you are but you're also mentoring the people that work with the newcomers. You're mentoring the people within your group. You're mentoring the officers. You're mentoring uh, the person who runs the archery line because the new person wants to, to try archery. And not everybody 
has a, a clear understanding of what they need to look out for when they're talking to a new, newcomer or what they should sort of, things like body language. Um, and I think it's a really good best practice if the Chatelaine sort of trains the group as well as trains themselves. It's, it's an ongoing process. I mean, there's things that I took a, a class from the Kingdom of Atlantia. Um, you're helping to integrate. The customs in one group are not necessarily the customs in another. So it's, it, you can't just point the person at, I mean, that's a good step but to say, hey, you're interested in pottery. Here's this amazing person in our group who knows a, a lot of information about pottery. I want to make sure that you guys get connected. That's a really, really good first step, but they're still going to flounder a little bit because they don't know the vocabulary. They don't necessarily know appropriate behavior. They don't know sort of uh, the mores of the group. They don't know the history of the group. They don't know, um, you know, sort of the group culture dynamics. And that's something that needs to be, be taught as well. And it isn't just the job of the shadowing to do that but you have to mentor the officers, the people around you to help them train the people that are helping mentor the new person. You're integrating them into your culture and keeping an open mind for maybe new things that they're bringing in, especially if they're transitional. And we'll, we'll talk about transitional as well, because there is a big difference between the person who's coming in brand spanking new or the person who's coming in with, let's say, an experience from, um, and I'm not dissing the LARP community, but if they're coming in from the LARP community or they're coming in from a rent care community, and they're still sort of they're still interested in playing that as well, you know, rock on. They may have some ideas that they want to share. And shutting ourselves off to that, I think, does more damage than it does good. And again, I'm not, it's not an all or nothing. It's not, okay, we're going to just blanketly ignore them and tell them that their ideas are bad. And we're not going to say, hey, everything that you do is wonderful. But make sure that they feel that they're in a safe and open space where they can share ideas from whatever community that they're coming in with and maybe find ways to pick one or two new ideas that they have whether they're um whether they're brand spanking new or whether they're um coming in from a with an outside experience from either another reenactment sort of group or from another kingdom recruitment and retention when you're dealing with another i ran into community. that Okay. Like, Sorry. Um, I, I see, I can definitely see where you're coming from. Um, I ran into that with a friend of ours when we were in Onstiora. I took her to a couple of uh, fighter practices and our uh, hospital or, or chatelaine at the time actually made a derogatory comment about Renfair folks. And that's where her background came from. And she has held a grudge and refused to listen to anything else or want anything else to do with the SDA because of just that one comment. It didn't matter that 30 other people tried to help say, don't listen to that person. Please understand. We, we want you here. That was all she ever remembered. And, and that, this was 10 years ago. And she brought it up just within the last few months. She still holds that comment. When you are brand new, you're, I mean, think about any time you've ever walked into a new situation, whether you're, you're volunteering for the first time. Like, I remember being, this is really silly, but I remember being a candy striper. 
and volunteering for the first time. Like this was a long time ago when they had candy stripers. I don't know if they even have those anymore. But you know, it was a person who volunteered at a hospital and did, you know, they would we would walk around with and take uh, flowers and things like that that arrived to patients' rooms. And we just try to be, you know, kind of healthy. Um, and all it takes is one person. You know, there could be 30 people, like you said, being positive, but that one person who, when you're brand new or you've just transitioned in, who, who kind of insults where you came from, it's really hard to get over that. So you're, you're again, you're, you're helping train the people and what you need to say to, um, or a way to approach it, for the people that are around you, your your other officers, the people that are horrible. Those people are nothing but fill in the blank. It, it's, it's a horrible feeling. So why would you want somebody to feel that? You know, there's a lot of ways you can kind of explain it, but just that, that reiteration um, and doing ongoing training and ongoing education for the people around you is as important as training the, 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 or helping the new people that are coming in. It really is because that, you know, it takes a child or it takes a village to raise a child. It really does take a group to make the connections for people to feel like they are welcome enough to want to stay and then want to commit time and want to commit money and want to commit energy and want to start volunteering. They're not going to do that if they're not feeling like they're in a safe, welcoming environment. You know, and we don't want people to go away. We, we don't. We, we need new people and we need fresh ideas. All right, so you're also trying to create opportunities. So again, from a local perspective, you're recruiting people and finding opportunities to recruit people. You're mentoring the new people that are coming in. You're mentoring the people around you, other officers, other members of your group. You're helping those people integrate you're educating and training the people around you as well as the newer person. And you're trying to create opportunities for them to play, which means that you sort of have to spend more time than a week or two weeks. It's not, um, it's sort of an ongoing thing. When I was a local Chatelaine, I would you know, as the person becomes more and more integrated, you know, they kind of become friends, right? Because most of us are friends with the people in our local group. But I would still, every once in a while, just do a check-in. Like, it could be two, three years down the road, and I'd be like, hey, is there anything new you want to try? Is there something, because as you gain more experience, there's, you see more opportunity, but you, even though you've got that two, three years maybe in the SCA, you still may not have the connections that somebody who's got five years of experience or 10 years of experience in order to go up to somebody and say, I want to try that. So just doing that general check-in, um, obviously you don't need to do it. If you've got a newcomer who is no longer new, but they're in their second or year, you don't have to check in with them every week, but maybe, you know, once a month, once every other month, hey, is there something new you want to try? How are things going? That, that kind of outreach and educating others within the group to do the same thing it, um, can be really helpful in, in helping that person feel like they've got, that they are being, being viewed as a lifetime member, that they're being viewed as part of the community and not, oh, look at the you know, oh, look, here, here's the, the, the new thing. Isn't that cool? Okay, we're done with you now. You know, it's, it's all a matter of, of perspective. So that's sort of local in a nutshell. And remember that you're, you're not doing it by yourself. You're doing it hopefully with the help of others. And we'll talk about that in a little bit too. Now from a regional level, you're starting to be the voice to the crown, the voice to the kingdom. 
you're sharing ideas up, you're sharing ideas down. And when I took over the, the regional office, one of the things that I realized is that as important as it is to trickle ideas up, it is ju just, and problems, it is just as important to trickle things down. So when people were sharing, so, I, so at a regional level, in the Midlands, there are, or there were 17, at the time, there was, when, when I was the regional Chatelaine, we didn't have the Barony of Ayrton. So the Barony, there was the Barony of Illerton and the, um, Barony of Carrigbaran, I think I'm, okay. So those, those two baronies, and there wasn't, neither of them had cantons at the time. So there were a total of 17 groups. With those 17 groups, I would try to connect everybody together probably about two or three times a year. I would host um, sort of like round table discussions within the, the Midlands Shadowlands groups just amongst yourself. You don't have to be a kingdom officer to say, hey guys, let's get together and have just a round table discussion. And don't call this a meeting. It is a round table discussion with the intent that you are sharing good ideas out and problem solving as a group for everybody. I would also, when I was getting those reports, I would ask everybody, pick one idea, one good thing, something that happened. Um, something that somebody in your group or you created that you think is worth sharing, let me like just sort of highlight that. I mean, I was still getting like mail at that point. And it was, it was so long ago, there were still a couple of mail reports coming in rather than all of them. Most of them were online, but there was the occasional um, snail mail that would happen. Like highlight it in, in the document. And, and we didn't have, it wasn't the, the, online form that you fill out now online. People had to download it, copy it, paste it back into an email. Um, so the, everybody would sort of pick a, an idea that happened, and then I would make sure that I shared it to the entire group. So here's this list of cool things that everybody is doing, whether it's, hey, we tried doing a demo at this place. Uh, at a local bookstore, or we set up posters at libraries and had good, and here's kind of what we put on our poster. Or when we had somebody who came up with the idea of creating a, a really short sort of interest survey, it was like a one page document that had, here's what archery is, little snippet, here's what armor combat is, here's what rapier is, here's what um, garb making consists of. Circle the things that you think are cool. So that little interest survey was a great idea, and I was able to share that because uh, with the people within the Midlands, and then everybody had this idea that they could potentially try. And then they would buddy up the people that were newcomers with the interest with people in the group that were willing to share their talents and skills with newcomers. So that was something that came from from that sort of having those regional meetings. So I would also make sure that, this is, just, this is a personal opinion, this is the Hillary of Langford personal opinion. If there is a local person that as a regional shadow lane, if there was somebody local who came up with a really awesome idea, I wanted to make sure that the kingdom shadow lane knew it and that the crown knew it as well. Because you're, you're position isn't just giving the information trickling down and trickling up. You're also supporting your people. And one way that we support each other is write each other in for awards. That's, that's, you know, that's something that is a part of who the SCA is. We also would train newer members how to do those things as well. That was part of the, the training format for, you know, when you're, when you're new and you see cool people doing things, I had somebody tell me one time, oh, I can't write somebody in for an award. I've only been around for like seven or eight years. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can. Let's show you how. 
You know, there's a lot of misinformation out there, a lot, and you'd be surprised. So that that constant sort of check-in and working to dispel misinformation is, is important as well. Um, so regional, I'm getting reports from my 17 groups. I'm making sure that those reports are disseminated into here's the good things, here's the things that we should be concerned about. Um, here is the, here's the celebration, people that I'm celebrating, and that would get sent up to the crown, or not to, well, to the, to the kingdom shadowing. And one of the things that I asked the kingdom shadowing to do was, when you read this, do you, uh, like, if there's something that really sticks out as cool, or you've got some solutions for somebody who's having problems, then let me know and I'll pass that down. So your so regional, again, you're not just passing information up, you're also passing information down. And it's important to make sure that you're doing that. So I spent about two years as, um, as a regional chatelaine and wound up as kingdom, um, just, just sort of flipped into it. I kind of stepped down from regional a little bit early to step up into the kingdom office. I'd applied for it before, and this is, this is just another little um, Hillary of Langford hint. I had applied for the Kingdom Channeling position um, once before and just really didn't have the experience. Applied again, um, well, they had remembered it and somebody had asked for that, the application the second time. So just cause it doesn't happen time number one, if there's a position you're really interested in, don't give up. Don't, don't stop trying. And if you have people that are newcomers that are seeing really cool things that they'd like to try, offices that they, they'd like to try, encourage them that, you know, just because you got dinked for it now doesn't mean that you're going to get dinked for it later. There's always reasons. Keep trying. It's okay. Um, as the, the kingdom chatelaine, and this is the I'm trying to keep an eye on time to you guys. I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast. Everybody good? Everybody with me? We're all okay? Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, the, the, the position, the duties of a kingdom shadowing. Mostly it's supporting your regional shadowings who are supporting your local shadowings. Everything that I talked about for the local, or I'm sorry, for the regional, as a kingdom shadowing, you're doing for your regionals. I would also kind of make a point of when I was reading the reports from, from the local group, or from, I'm sorry, from the regional group, I specifically asked for sort of the same things that I was sending in. Tell me somebody who's doing something really cool so I can contact them. And I would try really hard to make an effort to contact not just the regional and say, hey, that's great that your person in blah, 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 Shire is doing a good job. I would contact that person myself as well and tell them, hey, I think that's a great idea. Is it okay if I share that? And would kind of do that, you know, that comp compilation of here are some good ideas that you can take to, that we can share amongst ourselves. As a kingdom chatelaine, I tried to do that to the regionals so they could do that to the locals as well. So information is not just going up the food chain, it's also coming back down. I know that communication, um, if you talk to anybody from a local office, a lot of times the biggest complaint is communication, both up and back down. So trying to, to keep that ability for people to contact you and to, to send things down is just as important as back up. From a kingdom level, you're developing, um, when I was Kingdom Shadow Lane, I was trying to develop new programs. Um, we started doing um, an at-large sort of Shadow Lane thing as well. Um, it was a training program for people who were not local officers but wanted to help with new people so that they could volunteer within, within their groups. Um, which I think has led to kind of the, the, the it, they, people have expanded on it and done a much better job that, than I did, but 
Um, in the mid, there's a, I think it's called the Elders. I looked at it the other day, but it, it expanded into a much better program. And not every idea that you have is going to be successful, and that's okay. Try something else. You know, give it, give it a shot, but don't be afraid to keep trying. So we came up with, or I tried to come up with new ideas to educate Chatelaines to support local to see if you're brand new and you're looking for your local group and you're typing this in, you don't really know what you're looking for, you're not sure what, you're, what you need to type, you just type in the SEA and then it takes you to SEA Inc., which then takes you to your kingdom and then you find the thing where you're, I mean, this is a lot of work for somebody, right? Uh, who's new, who doesn't really know, if, know what they're looking for. You know, you type in medieval group and something, medieval reenactment, you're doing these Google searches and you finally wind up in your local group. And it took you maybe two, three hours to get there, but you connected to the zip code on the Kingdom website and boom, there's your local group and you pull up the website and the contact information is out of date. And their calendar is out of date. The calendar is from like three months ago and you have no idea where people are meeting or when they're meeting and you try to email the person and it comes back to you, it gets bounced back. You try to call somebody and the phone number is incorrect. Well, you're done. <laughs> you're walking away and you're finding something else or at least most people are so i worked with um web ministers and now think about this i'm a kingdom chatelaine and i'm contacting web ministers and say hey i want to work with you you're a local web minister for a group in michigan and you've never met me you have no idea who i am but can we work together to check out your website and make sure it's up to date awesome. Um, and some people were really more than willing. And some people I didn't really hear back from, but that's okay, because we were able to improve the websites of, I would say, maybe 15 groups that then got updated. And again, it was education. This is why this is important. Because as a web minister, you're doing your gig, but life gets busy, but you may not the local chat lanes we're working with their web ministers and hopefully we make the SEA together a little bit better place and It is, it is important for you to report. I know you may not always, as a, as a local officer, as a local Chatelaine, as a regional Chatelaine, as a Kingdom Chatelaine, it is really important. On the document that it created, I reinstated the reporting schedule, uh, May 1st and November 1st for Midland or Midrealm for locals, May 15th and November 15th for regionals. And if people stop reporting, then the problems and concerns that people are having aren't getting noticed. So you're not gonna get that regional support. And it is really, 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 if anybody wants to be a regional Chatelaine someday or, or, or a regional officer, and, or you wanna be a kingdom officer, this is probably one of the most important things you can do for your local people. You tell them, thank you, I received your report. That is crucial. I would try to say, thank you, I received your report on this day, and here's a really cool thing that I think you did. I'm excited about this because it's showing you that you took, or showing the people that are in the offices sort of underneath that food chain 
that you have not only received the report, but that you have read the report. Because it can be really, really frustrating as a local officer if you keep reporting and keep reporting and keep reporting and you never hear boo from the people above you. So for any of you that are heading towards that regional kingdom level, please make sure that you do that. At least, thank you, I received your report. If you can take it a little bit further, it's a little bit more work, but honestly, what it would do is, and I was lucky because I, I teach, right? I'm a, I'm a um, right now a middle school teacher, so I could bring my laptop into work, and after school, I could have the reports pulled up on one computer, and I would like email on the other computer, so I could do it a little bit faster. Um, I'm really good, like I've got multiple computers set up to, to be able to do different things like multitask. So it wasn't quite as extenuating as, as it sounds, but that, that thank you, I received your report is, is so important. Um, things that you need to share if you're reporting either locally or regionally or kingdom. What you need to share is the good things. Here's the cool idea that I, we had. Here's the cool idea that my group is trying. Here's the cool demo that we did because hopefully that will help support somebody else who's tr struggling trying to come up with an idea that will support their group. Here's the problem that we're having. We're struggling with this. And sometimes the problems can be really hard to talk about. It could be something as simple as we're in a college town and we have a lot of kids who get excited, but because school being what it is, they, they lose the ability to keep, to, to keep coming back. They, they become busy. Their schedules become such, or we lose them over the summer, or, you know, or we lose them over four years. So if you're reporting that up, hopefully the regional or the kingdom person can say, let me connect you with another person from a college town. And you guys can share ideas about what helps with that situation. The problems could be something like, hey, we've got this, and I'm not picking on nights, but we have a, a knight in our group who just is not welcoming to newcomers. He, he, he's, his comment was that so many people try armored combat and they just don't stick with it, so why should I bother? Then it's a matter of having, you know, if, some, doing some re-education. And if you're not comfortable with it, sending that, that problem up the food chain, maybe he's got a buddy that's willing to work with him. You don't know if you don't talk about it. So you want to send good news up and you want to send celebrations up, good ideas up, and you want to share your problems as well. And hopefully those same things, those same kind of things are coming down. Wow, <laughs> so I probably should have made this a two hour class. Okay, you guys good? Good with, okay, most reporting now is done online. Um, you know what, I'm gonna take a look and see the chat room. How many of you guys, if you wanna do a quick chat, how many of you guys are Chatelaines right now? I'm just curious. Either do a chat or do a shout out or something. Okay, I'll give you guys a minute to sort of answer that. Um, I'm not really seeing a response, so I'm gonna keep, oh, okay. All right, cool. So we've got somebody who's, thank you, uh, who's brand new. Someone who, okay, fantastic. Um, that's awesome. So we've got a variety of, of people at different levels of sort of the shadowing gig. Fantastic. Um, and obviously, if any of you guys want to contact me at any time after this, it doesn't have to be today, like a week from now, you're like, hey, I wish I would have asked this. Um, the email is posted as well, or you can...
problem helping out or answering questions, or if you have a good idea to share, that's awesome too. All right, so um, the hierarchy for Chatelaines, most of us know this. So there's the society Chatelaine. Um, right now it's Mistress Giovanna, um, Kingdom Chatelaine, and then you have your regionals and your locals, and those can almost always be found on a Kingdom webpage. Um, I am betting that we have people here from not just the mid, that there's probably people from at least one person from another kingdom. So I'm not going to list names, but that's on my document as well. Atlantia, hey, that's awesome. You guys had a rockin' cool um, university. I learned a lot from that, just saying. Um, so I'm going to talk about expectations. There's a lot of expectations and again some misinformation about what what a shadowing does. So I'm kind of going to take some of these one at a time and again guys jump in if you need to. Um, what do newcomers expect? What newcomers expect from having been a very long time ago a newcomer myself, um, is to have at least one friendly face that can help them navigate the system. And there's so much. It, it you know, it's. I remember being having been in the SCA, and I found friends, you know, groups of people to hang out with. Um, it, it wasn't. For, at least for me, I was, I was pretty lucky. I had a, a really solid, very friendly group that I joined um, initially. So it wasn't hard to, to make those connections. Um, they were very user friendly. But I still remember being in my first or second year and sitting in court and not getting it because the dialogue, even the words shadowing, right? X checker. If you're coming in new, those words, you don't know what they mean. Um, when you're working with your people on, at your officers, having them introduce themselves as I'm the seneschal or the president of the group, or I'm the president of the group in the SCA, we call it seneschal. Something like that, having on your webpage, seneschal, parentheses, president, can go a really, really long way and helping a newcomer feel like they belong because they start getting it. And what a newcomer expects is to have somebody help them get it. You can do all kinds of things to make that happen. Introducing them to people that share like interests, having people within your group who are willing to play, um, to play mentors, to play buddies, whatever you, term you want to come up with it. Um, there's, there's a lot of, of things that you can do to, to increase that sense of belonging and to help increase their body of knowledge. And if they're around for six months, a year, and their body of knowledge, their terminology, their use of vocabulary, if it hasn't increased, if they still aren't sure what these things are, they're not going to feel welcome and they're not going to feel like they belong. It's like everybody else is playing this game and you don't know the rules. And we want to make sure that they get the rules. So doing a wrapping, like if you've got somebody who's brand spanking new that's going to an event, one of the things that you can do, if they want it, because not everybody is going to feel the same way, but make sure you have somebody with them at all times throughout the day. If they're like, hey, I really kind of just want to go off and, and explore, great, go explore. You know, come back to me if you have questions. I'm here, this person is there, this person is there. Or have officers at different parts or experts. Maybe there is somebody in your group that, you know, they've been fighting for about 10 years and you know that if they're not on the field at that moment, if it's, if it's a one-on-one -on -one tourney, you know that they'd be willing to help a newcomer introduce them, like walk them over. Oh, you want to go explore here? Let me walk with you at least to the first thing that you want to see so that you know that they've got that connection that can explain it to them 
while they're hanging out watching. So again, you're increasing their body of knowledge. So they're starting to feel like they belong, so that they're starting to gain an understanding. Somebody being with them during court, during feast, um, I remember some friends, and they were friends first, right? And we're sitting in, uh, sitting in court, and somebody is getting knighted, and they did the buffet, and they freaked out. I mean, it was a quiet freak out. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, oh, I'm not, I'm not, hold on, did I freeze? Then going on, um, so newcomers expect to, to have people that teach them the vocabulary, that teach them what to wear, where to go, they're not necessarily looking for what to do. You don't need to necessarily babysit them unless it's a situation like court. Um, like warn them. You might be called up into court by the king and queen if you're at a, a royal court or the baron and baroness because we do the, the cup thing too uh, as landed. Um, but, but the most important if they don't have that basic sort of understanding and knowledge. What other officers expect sometimes is that, oh, that's just your job. It's the Chatelaine's job. So you really need to, if there's a group that believes that, you really need to just keep plugging away, work with the seneschal, work with a social media officer, work with anybody who'll listen, that it is the job of the group to make newcomers feel welcome. Now, that doesn't mean that they have to necessarily, um, you know, follow this person around continually, but that they have a place in helping a person feel like they belong. The group, got it, I just, just read the chat. The group as a whole, oh, oh, look, there we go. The group as a whole, needs to, to gain an understanding that the group as a whole needs to work together to help, to help a, a new person feel like they're part of a community. And it can be little things. Um, for a long time, we've been working to try to, to and it sounds very PC, but the, the use of the word mundane, change it to modern, little things like that. Um, to have somebody who is at a meeting, if they, they throw out uh, a term that a new person might not know, that somebody says, hey, did you get that? Do you understand that? It doesn't have to be a big thing. You don't have to embarrass the person who said it, but just double check that they're being understood. Um, or work with people to train them to say, okay, I was um, working on the ANS fair and my documentation or um, the, the research that I showed the judges so that, so that they're feel, filling in those blanks for people ahead of time. There is a big difference between recruitment and retention, even though they go hand in hand. There's a lot of reasons why people leave the SCA. They don't feel safe. Uh, their lives get busy. If it's something like their lives get busy, make sure that people within your group know it's okay to step away for a little bit. Um, I was working on, okay, I met Jeff, my husband, boy superhero. I met him in the SCA. We're like lifetime members. We're lifers, man. We're, we're both very involved have been for a really long time. I don't think we're going anywhere. Um, but we took a break for a while because my mom was sick. And when we, we, we attended, um, I think it was like one event for a half a day because that was the only time, and really sick, she had cancer. Um, so it was a really emotional time. And we were able to go to, and I'm an only child, so um, 
lots, not a lot of support. There's not like that sibling support. So helping mom as much as I could, doing the help support dad thing. We went to like a local get together because it was a half an hour away. And we were able to get away for a little bit. And we're only going to be there for, you know, like an hour. But it was at that, oh my gosh, I get to go see SCA people. I get to go see my friends. I haven't been around for a while. I've missed this so much. I mean, it was so bad that I was asking people, you know, if you go to this event, could you please, please, please send, like, post photos so I can live vicariously through you because this is such a large part of my life and I miss it. And we got to that get together and one person said, oh, I haven't seen them around for a while. I wonder where they've been. I think I forgot their names. Okay. didn't really want to come back, or at least there was that initial reaction. Now I got over myself, but it was harsh, especially when what we were going through was so emotionally draining, and the SCA to us was that breath of fresh air that we desperately needed, and the first words we heard when we walked in that door was, well, where have you been? Where have they been? Don't remember who they are, what have you done for us lately? That was hard. So again, educating people, it's okay if people take a break, but you want to be welcoming them when they come back. Um, retention is a, a big part of what you do as a chatelaine. And there is a big difference between a newcomer and somebody who's transitioning in. So someone who's transitioning in from another kingdom, A, is going to determine whether or not those people are going to stick around, especially if they don't have friends that are there. If they have people that they know, that helps. But if they don't, you have to ask different questions. You have to ask for understanding. Um, did you feel comfortable? Did you get what was happening? How was this different? Actually, that's a really good question to ask. How was this court different from your court? You're not calling them on the carpet. You're just asking for the differences. And then maybe, well, we'll look similar. So you're still connecting with them and helping them feel again like they belong because it really is all about belonging. I'm going to talk about um, best practices for a little bit because it looks like I've got like, oh my gosh, I've got 10 minutes. Um, you guys good so far? <laughs> all right. I feel like I'm just like, here, listen to me talk for an entire hour. That'll be fun. Um, for what newcomers want or need to know, how much is too much? You don't want to give them too much information about one topic. You just want to do overviews. The person who's the expert in how to make arrows by hand and grow the yew tree not necessarily the person that you want to hook them up with if they want to learn how do you hold a bow. And maybe you need to have a conversation with that person about that's great, but, but let's break it down into little snippets for them if they're interested. Um, how much is too much can be um, it can come in so many different forms. So you really want to be cognizant of, they want to know how to get there, what to wear, what to expect, but not necessarily all the details. They don't want the specifics, they want the general. Another thing to keep in mind is that the game that they want to play may not be the game that you want to play. It, like, I have so much respect 
for people who are all about authenticity. I do. I am in awe. For me, it's more of a social thing. Um, my family, my friends, hanging out, the, the after parties, being together at feast, sitting together in court, that's what's important to me. So I want to make sure that if someone comes in and they are all about authenticity, that I do not diss that, that I don't disrespect it, and that I help them connect with people who enjoy their version of what the game is, because it really is different for all of us. And every piece has value. So you, you don't want to disrespect the, the way that they play their game, it's unless, the, now, if the way that they play the game disrespects somebody else. Um, you really do need a holistic approach. You need everybody in the group welcoming newcomers in some way, having a general understanding of why newcomers are important, why they should be valued, why the person from another kingdom should be valued, why the person from another reenactment should be valued, why every person has value. And you don't know where the new good idea is going to come from. You don't know where the next king and queen are going to come from. You don't know where the future baron and baroness are going to come from. You don't know where the pen, I can never say this, pen cancel on, the person who wins the, the, that really cool award for a &S there. Um, you don't know where they're going to come from. So having that holistic approach from a group that supports those people is really important. And making sure that, that the group, or at least the majority of your local group, your local barony, understands why these people, why these people transitioning in, why these newcomers are important, that, that's crucial as well. And you want to include the newcomer in decision making. So in Ayrton, um, the barony that, that I'm a part of, um, we have these really great newcomer guard. It, I mean, it looks fantastic. It's in Ayrton colors. It's blue and green. It's basically kind of sort of um, a, a hoopla, a sort of that longish tunic, really nicely decorated in the baronial colors, and it has a gold key right here. So we know as these new people are walking around that they are new. That, I love it. But I always ask, are you okay wearing this? Or would you rather wear something that allows you to blend in and not be recognized as new? What are you more comfortable with? Here's the advantages. Here's the potential disadvantages. What do you want? Do you want to wear a favor that shows that you're new? Or would you prefer, what do you want? Do you want the buddies to walk around with you? Or would you prefer to walk around by yourself? And if that changes, please let me know. If you start out in the garb that, that lets you blend in, that doesn't indicate that you're a newcomer, great. If you want to change later on and you realize as you're progressing through the day, that maybe having that thing that shows that you're a newcomer would be a little more beneficial and you want to change, fantastic. Let me know. You want to include the newcomer in those decisions that affect them. What are you interested in? Let me introduce you. Oh, you realized that maybe um, fencing isn't the thing that you want to start out with? Maybe it's something you want to try later. That's okay. Because I remember um, I got all excited when I was relatively new about youth combat. I thought it was the coolest thing since sliced bread. And I started working really hard to get my authorization for youth combat. And then all of a sudden, somewhere along the line, I was like, huh, what do I do all day? I teach kids, and I love my job. It's awesome. But maybe in my hobby, I might want to do something a little different. And it's okay to change your mind midway through. 
it's okay to try new things. So having that person come up to you later and say, my interests have changed, even six months, a year down the road, you want to make sure that they feel like they're in a welcome enough place where they can do that and let them know and the rest of the group know it's all right to sort of change your mind. Um, so helping the newcomer feel like they're included in decision making, especially when it's about them, is really important. Oh my goodness, we're running out of time. Okay. Um, doing research as a shadowing, not being afraid. And one of the places that I looked uh, um, to do your own, own research is um, you can go to, like, I looked at, um, did a Google search on volunteerism, helping volunteers. And I found just this wealth of different activities, different ways to include somebody, um, helping volunteers feel more important. And that's something that I know we're, we don't have a whole lot of time, but helping that person feel like the, the newcomer or even the person transitioning in, that not only are they welcome, but they are a valuable part of the group, helping them find a job that they can do and not just sweeping floors, although that is really valuable, but that they're part of the group that can participate as an active volunteer can go a long way. When they're ready, can go a long way in making them feel like they belong. And again, it's really all about belonging. So finding different places to research, to get more tools in your toolbox can be really important in helping somebody feel like they're a part of of the greater whole. Working with your seneschal, working with your social media person, working with the web minister, that's a powerhouse in, in officers that would help somebody feel like they're part. Um, I'm going to run through a couple of things very quickly. We need to think diversity and inclusion as chatelaines. It's really important, especially now. We need to recruit a diverse population, which means that the people that we need to introduce people to need to be a diverse group of people. We need to make sure that we retain a diverse group of people. And that might look a little bit different. We need to try to use social media um, one of the things that I'm pushing our Barony to do um, is to use a Pinterest page to set up, I, I'm going to start working towards that, to use uh, YouTube videos. Um, I want to create, and it's okay, like social media with, uh, says, as said, this is a good thing, so that the Barony has its own YouTube. Oh, yeah, unmute people, <laughs> please, and thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, do you have questions? Questions, concern, ideas? I'm not hearing that there are. Come on, people, you can talk now. I have a listing of um, like links and websites to different Facebook groups. I actually bootlegged it off of um, a, a Shire back in Onstiora, and I apologize for keeping to refrain there, but I grew up there for the last 12 years, and so now I'm having to become mid-realm and learn. <laughs> um, and it's a list of like SC, SCA camping, 
you know, sewing garb, those type things. And so I'm looking, maybe trying to figure out how to adapt it to mid-realm, plus share those groups as well and things that are already established on Facebook and help point not only our newcomers, but even our own folks, because Staring Coda is so small. If for mo some of you may not know, but we it almost went away. And now we're trying to rebuild. And so we have a lot of very young members. Um, there's a few of us that have been in, you know, about 10 years or so, but most of them have been less than five years. So I'm thinking hopefully that'll work. Oh, yeah. Um, one of the things that you might want to do is do some outreach for um, groups around you as well and um, see if you can like offer some things that your group is doing that other groups aren't so that maybe, and I'm not saying that you're pulling from other groups, but find ways to connect with local groups around you to build sort of a solid community within your sort of area. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, I had actually started looking at trying to go to the barony in, um, and I'm bad with names on the baronies uh, in Indianapolis and the one at Lafayette just to get to know faces and people and try to, you know, see what I could do or we could do just in general. This is before I took over this position, but just is just for fun. And then of course, you know, 2020 hit. <laughs> so. Right. Right. Um, no, that's, that's a really good idea is to do that outreach. Um, and, and it, it could help in a whole lot of, lot of, it can help you. It can help them. It can help build relationships. And that's a beautiful thing. Um, other questions? No? All right, guys. Um, <laughs> unless there are, I'm going to reiterate again. Feel free to contact me at any time, either through Facebook or email. If you have questions, I am um, absolutely always happy to help. Um, I'm the, the Baroness of Ayrton, so fairly, fairly easy to find. Um, I'm, not, I'm not the Ayrton Chatelaine, but we do work closely together. Um, but I would be happy to help. At, oh my gosh, <laughs> my poor dog. I just like, I'm more than happy to help because I went into my poor dog. Um, so, so again, please feel free um, to contact me and any question, any idea, any sharing, and I would, I would love to, to, to do what I can. All right. Thank you guys for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that there was <laughs> more than just here. Let me throw a whole bunch of information at you and, uh, I appreciate you guys being here.